When you're calculating the wind loads on a structure like a bridge or building, you come across the peak velocity pressure. This pressure includes many parameters about the location, height, surrounding obstacles, and some more. In this video, we'll show how to calculate the peak velocity pressure step by step. To do that, we use an example of an office building. So by the end of the video, you know how to calculate the peak velocity pressure according to Eurocode, and you're one step closer to calculating wind loads on walls and roofs. If you like written content more, then you can also check out our article on our homepage. We leave a link in the description below. All right, let's get started. At first, we'll determine the height of the building above ground, which is in our case 17.1 meter. Next, we'll find the fundamental value of the basic velocity from Eurocode. This parameter describes a 10 minute mean value at a height of 10 meters above ground and in open country terrain, which includes annual risks and some more parameters. This value must be found in the national annex, or you can use the wind speed calculator made by Dluable Software. To do it with the online calculator, simply click on the link in the video description, click on the wind button, select your national annex and enter your location. If we do that for an office building located in Copenhagen, Denmark, then we get a value of 24 meter per second. Next up, the orography factor C0. It is found in Eurocode S1. But you might also have to check the national annex uh, because the value might be defined differently there. We move on to the turbulence factor KL. Eurocode recommends the turbulence factor to be taken as 1. But as it is a recommendation, check it again with your national annex if the value is defined differently there. The density of air is given as 1.25 kg per cubic meter. Now, I know, we're probably already tired of some parameters, but we still have a couple more to go. Next up, we define the reference height of terrain category 2. This value is found in Eurocode as 0 0.05 meters. Now we define the roughness length. According to Eurocode, there's five different categories. Areas that are exposed to open sea, lakes, areas with low vegetation, areas with regular cover of vegetation or buildings, and areas which are covered by at least 15% buildings. In our case, we assume that our office building is located in a suburban terrain with regular cover of buildings. Therefore, the building falls into terrain category 3 and the roughness length set 0 is 0 0.3 meters. Finally, we can calculate something. The terrain factor KR is calculated as 0 0.19 times set 0 divided by set 0 terrain category 2 to the power of 0 0.07. Now, inserting the values of Z0 and Z02 leads to a value of KR of 0 0.215. The turbulence intensity is calculated next as K1 divided by C0 times LN of Z divided by Z0. Now, inserting again the values that we already know, we get the result of 0 0.247. We move on to the roughness factor CR, which is calculated as CR equals to KR times LN of Z divided by Z0. This leads to a value of CR of 0 0.871. Next, the seasonal factor. The principle of the seasonal factor is that the wind load can be lowered because the wind is blowing less strong in some months. In the case that you're designing a temporary structure, such as a tent or a canopy, that is built for a short time frame and then disassembled after a few weeks or months, you might be able to use a seasonal factor depending on the months it has to withstand the wind. But as we are designing an office building, which is not temporary, the seasonal factor is taken as one and can be left out of the calculations. In case you use a seasonal factor, check out your national annex for the values. The principle of the directional factor is that the wind is blowing less from certain directions and therefore the peak velocity pressure and the wind load can be reduced for those directions. 
The recommended value for the directional factor is given in Eurocode S1. However, it is also referred to the national annex, which might define the value differently. In further calculations, the directional factor is not included. Now we can calculate the mean wind velocity S CR times C0 times VB0. Now inserting all the values that we have gotten, we get a result of Vm of 20.9 meters per second. Finally, we can calculate the peak velocity pressure S opening bracket 1 plus 7 times IV closing bracket times 1 over 2 times the density times Vm to the power of 2. This is leading now to a peak velocity pressure of 0.75 kN per square meters. To summarize, for a building with the height of 17.1 meter in a suburban area in Copenhagen, the wind load can be calculated with a peak velocity pressure of 0.75 kN per square meter. And that's what we're actually going to do in our next videos. We'll show you how to calculate the wind load on roofs and walls. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And you can also find other structural engineering guides on our homepage, structuralbasics.com. Until next time.